So let's look at another example problem where we have an isosceles triangle and we want to use the Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side length. So remember this Pythagorean theorem just relates the side lengths in a right triangle where A and B, those are the legs, you square them and add them together and they're equal to C squared where C is the hypotenuse, it's the side opposite the right angle and it's the longest side in the triangle. So also remember that isosceles triangles, they have two equal side lengths and two equal angles. So we can use this information to figure out what this missing side length is, x. And the main idea with these triangles is that this vertical line here is going to split them in half so that we essentially get two congruent right triangles. So this triangle and this triangle, those are going to be equal to each other. And we know they're going to be equal or congruent triangles because of the angle side angle congruence. So they have one pair of angles equal there, they have an equal side length, and the angle on the other side, they share that as well. So angle, side, angle, these two triangles are going to be congruent with each other. And that means that these two angles will be equal. And they're also supplementary. So if they're equal, if we add them together, they're going to add up to 180 degrees. And because they're equal, they both have to be 90 degrees. So that's how we know that those are going to be right angles. And we also know that this side length and this side length, those are going to be equal. So this length right here, this is x over 2, same for this one, since they have to add up to x. So we can look at either of these right triangles and use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's just look at this triangle right here. So we can set up that relationship. We have that this side length squared plus this side length squared is equal to 10 squared. So we can call this, let me use a darker color. We can call that maybe A or B, it doesn't matter, but the other one will be the opposite letter. So if this is A, then this is B, and the hypotenuse, that has to be C. So we can say that X over 2 squared, so that's A squared, plus B squared, or 8 squared, is equal to 10 squared. So squaring a fraction, remember the top and the bottom, the numerator and denominator each get squared, since essentially this is just x over 2 times x over 2. Then we have 8 squared, which is 64, and 10 squared, which is 100. So here, x squared is over 4. And let's subtract 64 on each side. So 100 minus 64, that's just 36. And let's multiply each side by 4. So x squared, 4 times 36, that's 144. So we can solve for x here by taking a square root of each side, and we only need to consider the positive case. And we know the square root of 144, that's just 12. So this long side is 12, which means these smaller side lengths, these x over 2, these are each 6. So the big side is 12, and the smaller sides are 6. And this should make sense. You might recognize this as a Pythagorean triple. Since remember, the simplest one is the 3, 4, 5 right triangle, but this is a multiple of that, where all the side lengths are multiplied by 2. So this is a 6, 8, 10 right triangle.